the Battle of London is over. The German flying bomb sites in northern France and Belgium have been captured, and Hitler's not-so-secret weapon has been defeated. Captured maps, discovered at the heavily bombed launching platforms, reveal targets the Germans had marked for destruction. The Nazis found no time to assemble these parts before being driven out. Deployed deep in forests and cleverly camouflaged, the launching sites were difficult to locate. But as each new one was discovered, Allied bombers were able to put it out of action, at least temporarily. It is now revealed these incessant Allied bombings delayed the flying bomb menace by many months. Compressed air containers to force fuel into the engine were among the components discovered intact. Notices gave warning of the presence of explosives. Many of the lethal weapons turned on their perpetrators. The Pas de Calais is littered with the remains of those that landed or exploded moments after being projected. Barrage balloons were among the three types of defenses employed against the flying bomb. During the 80-day battle, the balloons brought down 279 of them. Anti-aircraft guns accounted for 1,500 more. Almost 2,000 flying bombs fell victim to Allied fighter planes. Of the 8,000 bombs launched, 2,300 penetrated British defenses, most of them falling in the London vicinity. The propulsion roar of the flying bomb was easily identified and gave warning of the approaching blast. New deep shelters built for this emergency were put to use and saved the lives of thousands of people. Civilians and civil defense services did valiant rescue work without regard to danger. Thousands of Londoners were injured, and each flying bomb accounted for approximately one death. Hundreds of homes, hospitals, and public buildings were hit. They fell in crowded streets during rush traffic hours. But as defenses were improved, only one life was lost for every three bombs launched. Few of the robot bombs resulted in fire, but the great concussive blast exceeded anything London had experienced. The capital had good cause to be thankful that early bombings of the launching sites and experimental stations had substantially delayed the appearance of vengeance weapon number one. The Allied operations in northwestern France have resulted not only in complete military victory on the field, but have put an end to Hitler's vengeance against civilians. For the second time during this war, mighty London has shown that she can take it. This was the weapon on which Germany had hung her hopes for victory. That hope has been shattered. As the battle on Germany's home soil begins, the Battle of London has ended. Another milestone in the United Nations' march to victory was reached when the British Army rolled into Belgium. The liberation of this nation broke the shackles that enslaved the Belgian people during four years. And these free men and women were unrestrained in their reception for the army that delivered them. The 
Germans were given no rest by the British forces, punching forward at the amazing rate of 80 kilometers a day. Even the speed of the German blitz through the Low Countries in 1940 paled when compared to the victorious British onrush. There was little time to acknowledge the fervent welcome as the Allied forces passed through one Belgian town after another. By the time the British were within three kilometers of Brussels, the German flight had reached the state of panic. The hopeless condition of the once highly mechanized German army is revealed by the conveyances enlisted by the enemy in his desperate flight. Periodically along the advance, the Britishers found the victims of civilians, murdered by the Nazis a few hours earlier. Small wonder Belgian wives and mothers had to be restrained when Nazi captives were marched through their villages. Belgian underground fighters shadowed German snipers who remained behind, and they were rounded up in record time. The climax of the liberation came with the entrance into Brussels. German destruction squads tried to destroy the Palace of Justice with fire. Queues of civilians rushed to the scene and saved records of historic and topical value. But the Wehrmacht is finding less and less time in their swift backtracking to Germany to practice the vandalism they were able to indulge during earlier campaigns. The liberation of Brussels, and more recently the restoration of the city of Luxembourg, brings to five the number of European capitals given their freedom during a 20-day period. The American First Army has crossed the German border in force. These and other events inspired Prime Minister Churchill to declare recently, victory is everywhere. Mm -hmm.